Now, John, do you rather muscle it off or just use an impact driver? Well, I don't like using the impact. It'll all it's going to do is is. All right. That's what I, I stop. All right. Here we go. You ready? Yep. Okay, as you can see, this is pretty tight. Oh, I heard something. There you go. There you go. See why a thick puller is necessary. Yep. This would, uh, if you tried this, a regular gear puller, it, all it would have done was uh, break it. Now, do they require a much higher torque setting when you go to torque that down? I think you... the torque setting is a 120, 120 for that big bolt. I think that's what it is, 120. It's, it's well over 100. this again um, until the next time you get to pull the flywheel. That's the only time you ever use that tool is to pull the flywheel. Just put it back on, you don't need any special tools. Okay. okay. Oh, there's the springs, clutch that's, springs. That's the clutch disc. Mm -hmm. This is the flywheel ring gear and it bolts to this plate right here, which in turn bolts to this right here that goes on this tapered flange. This is tapered in here, this is tapered in here. It has keyway. This keyway is offset, so this can only go one way. Mm -hmm. uh, if I put it in here and I put it uh, the wrong way, this bolt won't start. Yeah. But if I turn around the other way, the bolt would go right through the middle of it and, and the keyways the keys here will lock, lock into here, and lock into the flywheel. This is because, particularly for the SPI, uh, okay, well, it's got two brakes. This tooth gear assembly has a brake here and a brake here, and that's how it determines, I'm pretty sure, where top dead center on the firing stroke of one and three, and I mean one. And, uh, what is it? One and four, and uh, are both up at the same time, and then two and three are up at the same time. And uh, got a date here at '95 on the clutch, so it's either been. I don't think the car is a '95, so it's probably been replaced once. Now the holes drill on the bottom there. Are those balancing Wait, holes? Yeah, those are balance okay. holes. That's all those are. Like I said, and this is pretty heavy. Um, they. Uh, and how will you know whether that clutch is good or not? Well, I'm we'll open it up here and we'll have a look at it. Like I said, I'm, I'm not going to use it one either way, but um, just for somebody that knows right. we're doing it. Okay, this is the uh, pressure plate. Mm -hmm. Clutch this sits on here. This clutch disc is eh, it's got a lot of meat on it. Um, generally, the way you do it is you look on the drive plate. You look for see if it's contaminated with oil. It doesn't look to be. Looks dry. Got a little bit of rust on it. It's been sitting a year or two. Uh, these springs in the middle they should be all reasonably tight. 
I've seen some that come out and, and they're worn and they'll actually rattle around in here and that's mm -hmm. usually a sign that it's worn. But the, the real big thing is you're looking for the thickness because that's what wears. The two sides wear down and these rivets that hold the two sides together, when it gets bad or, or low or, or uh, at the end of its life, these rivets will actually start to wear onto the surface here. This this will will be worn away and you'll see shiny parts of because these are brass rivets. You'll see shiny brass. Now, it, this that, is about half life on yeah, this one. Probably. If that happens, do you have to resurface the, uh, um, the pressure plate? You know, that's what everybody tells you. I mean, if we're at my car and I knew I do all my own work, so I, I, I'm not too worried about it. If it, you know, bad or good, whatever. I probably am going to just put a new disc in it. It depends. I mean, if it's if it's worn a quarter inch groove, then yes, I'm probably going to replace the pressure plate. Right. But if it's just just a little little dimple, a little groove, right where one or two rivets have gone, I, I'm going to leave it. I'm just going to put a new disc in it. But a mini clutch isn't all that expensive. Um, the old style is super cheap. The pressure plate. This spring and release bearing is like a hundred dollars. Oh, that is true. Uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, whereas these, if you buy the whole shebang, can be as much as I think three, four hundred, which a lot. But like I say, this is about half life on this one. You want to check these splines right here. If you're going to reuse this, make sure those splines are good. They fit right on there. Something's not right there. Like I say, it should. Well. Something's wrong in the transmission. We're going to find out later. Okay. Um, this, other than having a little tiny oil leak in here, this uh, I don't see anything wrong in there. Let's put this back over on top of here and uh, get this out. Let's look at this. This is the weight of the flywheel. This is what the mass that the engine rotates, and they make it heavy so that you don't get a pulsing between firing strokes. Right. And the heavier it is, the more even and smooth the motor is, but consequently it takes longer for you to generate power to make this mass spin, so you lose power or acceleration in making the heavy mass go faster. Mm -hmm. um, they make these where they grind away a lot of this metal. And um, I've had them before. You can tell some difference, but it's, it's not night and day when you put one in. I've never had an SPI. This is actually the first SPI motor I've taken apart. I've, I've done MPIs and all the others, but this is the first SPI I've done. So, so on there. Put the bolts back on here. Where do we go from here? Uh, we're going to... Um, Probably pull the cylinder head. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm going to start next. Move the cylinder head and just some of the ancillaries. Now that was the spot where the uh, distributor went, but it doesn't have a distributor, right? Uh, this this does. The SPIs did. It's the MPI that did okay. the later ones. And I, this is the first time I've done a car that had the newer style transfer pipe, so uh, I'm not familiar with those. The, the earlier cars that I'm familiar with all had the um, ha had a. Uh, banjo bolt here, banjo, and then a pipe that went down to the top of the filter. And, and I, I, my understanding is the threads are different, and uh, but we'll fix that later. Now what you're taking off now are going to be the, the head bolts, right? This is, well, I'm actually I'm going to pull the rocker cover. I ought to probably do that first. But yes. And as you 
see. They've got a little bit of water in here. Again, I probably wouldn't ever use these again. He's brought the stud up with him, which is pretty common. How many bolts are there? Uh, this is a nine bolt head. Uh, some of the others, like on my car, they put a small uh, a bolt here that goes very close to the water jacket. So it's got a smaller thread, 5 sixteenths. And then it's got another regular 3 eighths that they drill right back in here. Okay. And the original Cooper S had them. But uh, it was easy to put it on any head. You can drill it. Okay, I think we're about ready to pull this head off right now.
I'm not going to reuse any of these items. Uh, I'm not worried about keeping them in order. Okay, but usually, if you were, you would basically yes. label all those as far as if I was going to reuse uh, the push rods, uh, lifters, anything which that's probably never used for using lifters, but uh, anything that I was going to reuse that comes in order, I would label it. Okay. Usually, I get a piece of thin cardboard and I punch holes in it, and uh, I'll draw a picture or whatever where it all goes, and then put the item through the cardboard. Show our view, John, if you would, show our viewers uh, an example of the push rod. Just let me get a close up of it if you can, just so they know what you're talking about here. This push rod. Okay, this, the camshaft rolls around, there's a lifter underneath there, the lifter that sits inside it, the lifter pushes this up. When this comes up, it goes against the back of the rocker and pushes the rocker up. And this, the push goes over the top of the valve and pushes the valve down, which opens it up. Okay. And these are the centered steel rockers, and generally, See it on there? They'll they'll pit, and there's a little pit right there. Uh, you can go down here, and there's another one on that one. It's basically, my understanding is they make these. Hold on a second, let me. Okay. Hold it real still for just a second. Okay, go ahead. Um, these are made by taking, my understanding, powdered metal, and they pour it in a mold and then they heat it and compress it and the, the, the metal melts together and comes out in the shape of whatever the mold is. And these work good but like I say they'll they'll pit right on the face here and if it's just a road car, just a street car and you're not too worried about a little pitting it's probably not going to hurt you at all. It's, it's But after a while once it starts it never gets better. Okay. Um, these are the, the later style production rockers and these, yeah, I think you can still buy these brand new today. The car I have uh, that this is going to go in has got the roller tips. Okay, the next thing is, let's pull this head up. Okay. The only thing holding the head on right now is, what's it got? One, two, three, four, five studs. and. Okay. I think I can actually see water in that uh, uh, number that, uh, three piston. I prepared that earlier. Yep. <laughs> that, that is actually um, um, Marvel Mystery Oil. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Okay. Because this is the one that didn't have the the spark plug in it, uh -huh. and it's full of crud. And I thought, if I'm ever going to get this crank to turn and this piston out, I might as well put some Marble Mystery in it. Gotcha. So I pulled the plug out, poured some in there, and it's going to sit there as long as it can. Uh, the engine itself, or the cylinder head, um, number one, and uh, it's number four at this end, and you can see here, number one, three, and four, look like they burned pretty close to the same. You can see number two. I, I, I don't know if it had a problem with number two or if he just. The story was it had a locked up gearbox. So uh, I don't know what he was doing. I mean, it does, it's not horrible. It, the color is different, but I mean, the, the actual valves look about the same. Um, none of them were receding. It's probably got a lead free head, which means the exhaust valve. The seat that it sits on is a hardened steel they put in here. They grind a, a, a little recess in the cylinder head and they press that in and it, the unleaded fuel uh, won't cause the exhaust valve to, to pound its way into the head because of that. Now, um, is is the exhaust valve the smaller one? or Yes, the, the exhaust valve is small. All, almost all cars, the exhaust valve is smaller. Usually after the combustion, You've extracted the energy, and so the exhaust gases leaving are less than the intake fresh gas. Okay. And so that's why almost all cars, you'll have a, a, a smaller exhaust than an intake valve. Intake valve. And if I'm not mistaken, some actually have, some three-valve heads have two intake valves and one exhaust. 
Okay, now when they have multiple intake valves, are the intake valves smaller than the exhaust? You know, I, 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 I can't say because I don't see too many of them, okay. but my guess is they're just slightly larger. Okay. Uh, but you don't see too many heads where the exhaust valve is close to the intake valve side. But they want to get as much charge in as they can, so they make the valves as big as they possibly can. You see these are sitting in here, and they're pretty close to one another there in the center. Yeah. But I've actually got larger ones in the other one, and what they will do on some of them, they will take the guide, and they will make a special guide with the hole in the center offset. So when they put it in, they can actually move the valve away from the other valve, and give, and so you can use a, a larger valve. Gotcha. And uh, you don't see those very often, but they're out there. Uh, I mean, on a Mini, you can go a little bit bigger than that, but not a lot. I mean, there's just no room in there. Okay, and again, I'm not going to use this. This will sit as a spare if, you know, we have to build an engine up down the road and just need a head. Mm -hmm. That would be it. Okay. okay. <sighs> Let's see here. The old head gasket here. And they're not reusable. Uh, well, this one wouldn't be. <laughs> Pretty beat up. Yeah. But again, I, I'm guessing and saying this car has never been messed with. Oil pressure switch, oil um, pressure relief valve here. Valve I'm trying to remove here and it doesn't want to come out. It'll come out later. <laughs> Not critical. Okay. Well, I'm going to pull off a few things here just to lighten the load. Water pump. So one nice thing about the older uh, cars and their water pumps are pretty easily accessible. Yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't got to pull the, uh, the entire diamond engine. belt. And Yeah, I would never reuse it, but uh, it doesn't look bad. It's just old. Okay. Cheerio, YouTubers.